we, we, they gave us the, uh, this amazing opportunity to have some of our women speak. We got so many amazing stories within uh, our ambassadors and our guardians, and um, we had an opportunity to share some of these stories. The, the fact that there's women coming from all over, just wowing me. So um, many of them are accomplished. Some are just, we have uh, one of our, one of our ambassadors, she's a billion, you know, just a writer, but everybody was just as important as everybody else. So we're just gonna, here we go, we're getting ready. So our first speaker, Juvina Kuala, yes, the Laundry Wasp. Have you guys heard of her before? She's one of those women who's out there posting about these trips that she's done. I think she's on a poster right over here. You know, and is a true inspiration to everyone. But every, anyone here can do it. And this is one thing that Wilbur also meant a lot to me. How many of you pushed your boundaries with Wilbur? How many of you rode further, harder, longer than you've ever ridden? And whether you wouldn't have ridden in. And it's, it's women like the women who are going to be speaking here today that are doing that, going out there and riding hard. All right, I think we're going to get Juvena up here. I'm going to go check. I'll be right back. It's Juvena! Pagodas in the Irrawada Plains. And this is 
uh, towards India. So you see that uh, yellow and white border there. So that is the border between India and Myanmar. So this is this part of India is an Indian as forgotten by India, called the Northeast India. And this Northeast India, uh, yeah, is one of the most diverse uh, and beautiful, untouched places in the world, I think. Over there, I, I can easily pass on as a Northeast India. So when I was there, nobody thought that I was a foreigner until I start putting my chopsticks in a camping trip. <laughs> it was like Chinese. Okay. <laughs> okay, and this is a Living Roots Bridge, um, one of the finest bioengineering that I've ever seen. So this tree actually grows with time. It grows stronger and stronger. And this is what indigenous people can taught us about, teach us about living in harmony with the environment. Yeah, and I just think this is amazing. And in this area, it's called the uh, Magalaya, um, and the people there are called the Pasi. So in Pasi, they are a mature linear society. Uh, women has more economic power over there. And so there was a Pasi lady who was um, confiding in me about her relationship problems, and she would say, I will never date a Pasi man again because they are only after our money. So, <laughs> no over there. And next I went into Nepal. And it was just a few months, uh, two months after the devastating earthquake in 2015. And yes, uh, there was a lot of destruction, but I also witnessed um, resilience of people. People are still living in tents, carrying on their lives. And uh, schools are, and the classes are being conducted uh, in the tents and people coming forward to donate their blood. Okay, and next I went to uh, back to India. Yes, okay, this is uh, one of the, probably one of the toughest roads I've ever been. Uh, this is called the Manali Lake Highway and the average elevation of the road is around 4,000 meters high. And before I left on my trip, uh, a lot of people told me that, you know what, I don't think you should go with your scooter, you will not survive. So I thought to myself, but the thing is I haven't even tried. If I never try, I will never know. The thing is, yes, you should always try. If you do not try, there's 0% chance of succeeding. Yes, if you try, okay, even if you don't succeed, at least you know that you've done it. And so I went on to, and some of the most um, difficult roads actually lead to some of the most beautiful scenery. And this is uh, somewhere near the China border. The, I'm not sure if you have watched uh, Three Idiots movie. Uh, this was the, the lake that was in the final scene. And I even went up further to um, 5,389 meters high. Uh, it was not a very nice condition. I fell down four times, but I still made it up all the way. You can see on the scooter, um, yeah, it's a uh, one pack snow chain. <laughs> Next, I went on to Pakistan. Okay, so when I went to Pakistan, a lot of my friends were like telling me, hey, please do not go to Pakistan, it's very dangerous. Um, the people will help you hostage, and it is true. Uh, for four months, I was held hostage by all these people in Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> and this gentleman, uh, he almost wanted to slaughter two goats for me until I informed him that actually I'm a vegetarian. So Pakistanis, they will actually go all their way to actually please their guests and sometimes I just feel really bad about it. And a lot of times, um, my payment for goods and services were refused all because I'm a guest in their country. And for the first time in my life, I was chased out of a shop for wanting to pay for something. <laughs> Next. And this is a Taiwan, she's another Pakistani um, biker from, uh, yeah, I think Gulia Shan should know her. Uh, so if you ask me if Pakistan is really dangerous, I would say, uh, yes, looking at the way that um, they feed their guests is really dangerous to the waistline. <laughs> and this is a woman uh, on wheels rally, so the Punjab government were encouraging uh, women to take up motorcycling so that they can be in charge of their mobility and their movement. And I was invited to be part of the rally. So it's really amazing to see hundreds 
over Pakistani women riders riding alongside and there were all the men supporting them at the rally as well. So in order to make all this happen, like women empowerment, I realized that you know, we also get, need to get our men involved as well. Yes. <laughs> and so I also like to thank you all the men who are also part of this, uh, supporting WRW at the sideline. Thank you very much. And this is uh, in one of the poorest uh, regions in Pakistan. A literacy rate for girls uh, are as low as uh, 2%. Um, however, in uh, just a few hundred kilometers up north, literacy rate was almost as high as 100%. So what Pakistan has really told me that you cannot paint such a diverse country with a single paintbrush. Yes, whatever we read in the media, yes, it doesn't totally untrue or true but there's another phase of that country that the media doesn't portray so until we are really there and then we will know and this is some of the pictures of the beautiful uh, North Pakistan Bunza Valley this is my favorite picture <laughs> okay and next up uh, on the way to Iran I had to be escorted um, by the police because of insurgency issue in the Balochistan border so again, just before the, the Iranian border, again I was held hostage uh, by the police officer. They refused to let me go until I had a meal with them. <laughs> and this is Iran. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the WRW didn't go through Iran uh, because yeah, women, uh, they do not have the rights to fully ride a motorcycle there yet. But the country is really beautiful, full of um, Islamic geometry, architecture, and as well, the people, all you need is the eye contact with the local. And you get invited to the whole, whole house for tea, for meal. Um, yeah, the Iranian people are just one of the friendliest I've ever met as well. And this is one of my um, picnic with uh, local family. So sometimes I, uh, because I'm camping in a park, and sometimes I would find breakfast being left outside my tent just for me. Yeah. This is a family that took me in. They met me at a, a grocery shop and we had conversation and they invited me over. And the gentleman said, my house, your house, same, same, you do. I think you have some say, similar saying as well. So he was asking me to treat uh, his house like mine. And then I stayed there for two days and they were just wonderful homes as well. And yeah, Iran, Iran is a country of paradoxes. Uh, alcohol is banned over there, but I found Jack Daniel in the form of barbecue sauce. <laughs> um, however, um, a lot of the locals they actually make their moonshine at home. I would say Iran is the country in Asia where I drank the most alcohol. And the public image and the private image is totally different. So yes, you, you see women being built in the public, but behind the closed door, there was lots of party going on. <laughs> So you see women coming up there and then behind the closed door, yeah, they get changed and then there was a party going on. Aww. So you can see that actually people, regardless of where you're from, are actually the same. And we shouldn't uh, ostracize the entire nation of people just because of a few decisions that's, that's made by a few people at the top. Right? <laughs> um, this is Bella Shafie. I think she's the ambassador for Iran as well. Uh, women are not allowed to ride motorcycles on the street publicly. So she took motocross and take riding to the track. And so I spent a good time riding with her for a day. And she has also been fighting for women's right to ride motorcycle as well. And these are a group of uh, bikers who actually overhauled my scooter without taking a single cent from me. So they the exhaust, piston, lots of things, spend two days on my scooter and when I want to pay them, they say pay me back uh, when you return. So my gratitude to that in Iran is really big. I have to go back there someday. And next I went on to uh, Armenia. Went to somewhere in Armenia, the Tatev Monastery. And Georgia. Oh, 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 the, the, sorry? Two minutes. Okay. And yeah. I went on to Turkey, 
and this policeman picked all my meal without telling me. <laughs> and this is Papadokia in Turkey as well. And one of the host family in Turkey as well. And then after I went on to um, the Balto to I stayed there for a few months. I uh, volunteered for a free stay in, uh, in a hostel to hibernate for winter as well. At the same time, I, I, I rebuilt my scooter. So, I left Singapore on mechanical idiot to be, become a roadside mechanic. And I also spent some time uh, volunteering in the refugee soup kitchen um, for all the asylum seekers as well. And I realized that if you are judged by the passport you hold and not the person you are in the borders. And this is what I have as a privilege, being able to travel so many countries with a Singapore passport. Yeah, so uh, yeah, this is something that, that, that really, really hit me. Okay, so when uh, it was warmer, I continued on my journey to the rest of Europe, and this is in Czech Republic. And <laughs> okay, so plus I want to finish off with a video, just a one-minute video of two years on the road.